Hello, all of my friends in pre-K. This is Mrs. Werman, and I know we are usually in the library for story time, but today you get to visit my home library. See all my books? These are some of the books in my family room. Um, I know we can't be in the building to have story time today, but I can't have you not have story time with me because I love reading to you. So I thought I would visit you from my library and I could read you some stories from here. Um, so we're gonna see how this works because sometimes it's kind of hard to make the, all of the pictures fit in the screen. So I'm not very um, experienced with the movie camera thing. So I'm trying to figure this out. All right, so I thought we would start with a story by somebody you've heard from before. We read a story called, If You Give a Pig a Pancake, I think. And maybe we've read, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. So um, this is from the same author and it is called, If You Give a Moose a Muffin. If you give a moose a muffin, he'll want some jam to go with it. So you'll bring out some of your mother's homemade blackberry jam. When he has finished eating the muffin, he'll want another and another. And another, when they're all gone, he'll ask you to make more. Oh my goodness, he's a very hungry moose. You'll have to go to the store to get some muffin mix. He'll want to go with you. When he opens the door and feels how chilly it is, he'll want to borrow a sweater. Oops, let me get my fingers out of the moose's nose. There we go. He'll ask to borrow a sweater. I don't think I would have a sweater big enough for a moose, I have to say. When he puts the sweater on, he'll notice that one of the buttons is loose. He'll ask for a needle and thread. Oh, it's nice of him to offer to fix it, I think. He'll start sewing. The button will remind him of the puppets his grandmother used to make. Um, see how he's making a mess in the background, by the way? He's working so hard over here to be helpful but still making a mess. So he'll ask for some old socks. He'll make sock puppets. When they're done, he'll want to put on a puppet show. Oh, look, it's a moose just like him. And look, it's a mouse like if you give a mouse a cookie. And I think it's the same mouse. He'll need some cardboard and paints. Then he'll ask you to help make the scenery. Oh my gosh. Look at what a mess they're making. It does look like fun though. When the scenery is finished, he'll get behind the couch, but his antlers will stick out. So, He'll ask you for something to cover them up. Oh my goodness, look how fancy the scenery is. They really worked hard on that, didn't they? You'll bring him a sheet from your bed. When he sees the sheet, he'll remember that he wants to be a ghost for Halloween. He'll wanna try it now. What does it say? He'll try it on and shout, Boo! It'll scare him so much, he'll knock over the paints. Oh no. So he'll use the sheet to clean up the mess. Then he'll ask for some soap to wash it out. I like that he's trying to clean up after himself, that's nice. He'll probably wanna hang the sheet up to dry. He'll go outside and put it on the clothesline. When he's out in the yard, he'll see your mother's blackberry bushes. Seeing the blackberries will remind him of jam. He'll probably ask you for some. And chances are Look at all that stuff he's got gathered together. Oh my goodness, they made a mess. If you give him the jam, 
which of course you will do because you're such a kind and generous person. He'll want a muffin to go with it. The end. Or I guess the beginning again, kind of. You have to start at the beginning. Now he's asked for a muffin. See, now we're back to the beginning if you give a moose a muffin. I love the muffin. I love the if you give an animal a something books. They're one of my favorite kind of books. Um, I thought I would read you some more. I have some different choices for you. Like, let's see here. I have a book called The Monster Who Ate Darkness. I don't know if anybody has read this one before. It's a really interesting book. I don't think I've ever seen a book about a monster who ate darkness. Okay, let me see here. Let's see if I can get the picture fit. That is a little person asleep in their bed and they look very nervous because it's so dark. Look at the monster over the desk. Look at that, and look, that looks like a monster. And look, look at the shadow coming under the door. Looks a little bit like a monster too. Let's find out what happens. I'm gonna push the camera back so I can fit the whole book on the screen. Jojo couldn't sleep. He didn't like the darkness under the bed. He thought a monster might be hiding there. Looks entirely possible, I have to say. There's plenty of room under there. Well, this time there was a tiny speck of a monster so small, he could hardly be seen, but he had a big empty feeling inside of him that made him hungry, very hungry. There's the hungry monster. Look, he's very small. I don't think he's very frightening. Do you? He doesn't seem scary yet. He nibbled at a woolly slipper under the bed. Ugh, horrible. He bit into a tin toy car. Ouch! It hurt his gums. Then he saw something interesting. It was a box. There he is, eating the car. And then he found a box. He peeked through a pinhole in the box and saw that it was full of darkness. He sucked the darkness out of the box, every last bit. Delicious! There he is. He sucked every little bit of it out that hole. Do you see him right there? Sucking all of the darkness into the box. Oh, I'm sorry, into his mouth, out of the box. The monster was a teeny bit bigger and he was still hungry. He looked around for something else to eat. There was a lot more darkness under the bed. The monster ate all of it. He licked into the darkest corners until there wasn't any left. Look at that. All of it just for him. He's little, so little. I wonder how he fits it all in his tummy. The monster got quite a lot bigger, but he was still hungry. So he ate all the darkness in the closet and all the darkness hiding behind the folds in the curtain. The monster got bigger and bigger, but he was still hungry. So he slipped out of Jojo's house, sneaking out the window. Do you see him? And he went looking in all the other houses for more darkness to eat. He found darkness in cellars and in attics. That seems like a smart place to go look for darkness, I think. Look at how long his tongue is. That's so funny. Look at that. Kind of like a lizard or a snake. And chimneys. He ate it all up and he licked them quite clean. There he is. That is a lot of darkness. He is getting bigger, I think. I think it's funny that the dog isn't afraid of him. Don't you think the little dog would be afraid of him? He found new and exciting ways to eat darkness. He liked darkness spread on burned toast. He liked darkness sandwiches. He especially liked darkness soup, which he made out of the darkness at the bottom of wells and darkness stew, which he made out of the darkness in ditches. 
He's quite the chef. He looks a little bit like a cat there, don't you think? A little bit like a cat making himself some soup. Then he found rabbit holes. He ate all the darkness there. There's that big curly tongue again. And fox holes, a real delicacy. Look at that. I don't know if you know what the word delicacy means. It means something extra special, delicious that you can't find all the time. Something you eat every day is not a delicacy. Something that's special and delicious that you only get to have every now and then, that is a delicacy. And then he found the darkness in caves. There was so much of it, but he scooped the caves and scraped them clean. That is a lot for one serving. Oh my goodness, I didn't notice this is a giraffe. He must be in Africa eating all of the darkness there. But he was still hungry. So he ate all the darkness he could find in the darkest forests. His tongue has gotten longer and longer. Do you see that thing? That is crazy. And all the darkness at the bottom of deep volcanoes. And though the monster got bigger and bigger, he was still hungry. He is bigger, look at him. He was afraid that he had eaten all the darkness that there was. Then he saw the night coming. I'm sorry to say that he ate all the darkness of the night. He ate it all the way to the moon, which no longer shone in the sky. He ate it all around the stars, which no longer twinkled. Look how sad the moon is. Now there was no more darkness. There was no dawn and no dusk. There were no shadows and hardly any dreams. There was only the light, the dark. Oh, I'm sorry, the stark and staring light. He's pretty much the only dark thing left, isn't he? Since he ate all of the darkness. The monster sat on a lonely planet, feeling very sad that there was no more darkness for him to eat. He looked at the earth. The earth looked very sad too, even though it was shining brightly. Look how big he is that you can see the earth. See how little the earth is way far away? Oh my goodness. You see, without the dark, the owls didn't wake up at night. They slept so long and soundly that they kept falling out of the treetops. Look at that, whoops. That one's going right into the water, you can just tell. Fireflies didn't bother to go out because they couldn't be seen. Cat's eyes no longer shone. So the cats lost a lot of their glamour. Hedgehogs went stumbling about blindly in the night light and kept bumping into each other. Foxes crashed into boulders. Bats hung right side up instead of upside down. Bears were equally upset and confused. Look at all those bats, that is upside down. I wonder if they get dizzy hanging the wrong way like that. Oh, that is a sad monster. He's very fat, but he's also very sad. Then the monster heard from far away a strange sound. It was a little boy named Jojo crying. He was crying because he couldn't get to sleep. Why couldn't he get to sleep? Because there was too much light. Wah! Look, you can hear him all the way out from here in space. Even though the monster was very big and so full of darkness, he could squeeze into the smallest spaces he could slide through cracks in windows and seep through pinholes in doors. So he crept back into Jojo's bedroom. 
<coughs> excuse me, he saw the little boy crying for his mother who didn't hear him because she was huddled under the covers trying to find some dark. He looks very worried about the little boy, Jojo. Then the monster did something amazing. What do you think he did? From this picture, you really can't tell. I can't tell if, if the monster's gonna eat him, like, Ow! and we're about to see the monster eat him or not. Jojo looks very afraid, I have to say. He picked up the little boy in his great, dark, hairy arms, which were very soft and not a bit hairy. Oh, excuse me, I read that wrong. He picked up the little boy in his great, dark arms, which were very soft and not a bit hairy. And he rocked him as if he were in a cradle and he hummed a darkness lullaby. I don't know what a darkness lullaby sounds like, but I think that sounds great. Soon, Jojo was asleep. So was the monster. He wasn't hungry anymore. He just didn't have that big empty feeling inside of him. Instead, he snored and snoozed with the little boy safe in his arms. Oh, you see them see the darkness creeping creeping back. Look outside the window. There's some darkness there too. It's all coming right out of the horn on top of his head, isn't it? I think that's where it's coming out again. Back into the world where it belongs. And as he snoozed, all the darkness oozed out of him. It went right back to where it belonged. It oozed and oozed until the monster was no more than a tiny speck again. There was a lot of darkness in that monster, huh? A small, happy speck, fast asleep in the arms of a boy. The end. And look, oh, look at the back. I love that with the little bunny asleep in some of the darkness, just a little splotch of darkness, not very much. So that was the monster who ate darkness. I like that one a lot. I think it's kind of neat. All right, let's see. <clears throat> I thought I would read you. Let's see, I think I'm gonna read one more today. I don't know if anybody knows this story. Ellison the Elephant. Oh, look. It looks like he might be a little bit shy. Let's see what we can find out about Ellison. Ellison was an elephant, a little elephant and young. He was a young and little elephant, but not a baby elephant. His friends and his sister Edna could all make their trumpet blasts like other elephants, but not Ellison. Oh, he is sad. I thought he was sad in that picture. Look how much fun they're all having, but he doesn't get to play with them. Oh, poor Ellison. He tried and tried, but all he got was a little toot. That's not a very elephanty noise, I don't think. See, cried Ellison, I don't even sound like an elephant. Ellison, I love your sound, his mother insisted. It sounds like you. Well, I don't want to sound like me, Ellison answered. I want to make a trumpet sound like everyone else. There he is talking to his mom, he seems frustrated. Ellison's mom got very close and touched him gently with the tip of her trunk. Ellison, you are not an ordinary elephant. No, sir, you are extraordinary. Even your name is unusual. All the greatest elephants in history were unusual. That's what made them great. but they tease me, mom. Oh, now, Ellison, one day they'll all want to be like you. In the meantime, you're an elephant. You have to have thick skin. With this, she gave him a motherly squeeze. That's very sweet. He needed a squeeze from his mom. Together, they walked down to the watering hole, trunk in trunk, where all the other elephants were bathing. 
I think trunk in trunk is kind of like hand in hand for people. Ellison liked it when mom washed his back, but when she sprayed under his chin, the ticklish Ellison giggled and squirmed. He watched as the others played their noisy games. They squealed and blasted, honked and blared, not wanting to be called Smellison or Tootie again. Ellison made his way up the bank and behind a small clump of trees where he could be alone with his imagination. There, he tried and tried to make that wonderful grand call that came so easily to everyone else. He filled his cheeks with breath and he threw his big ears forward. <laughs> but all he got was a little toot. Full of despair, Ellison stomped and stormed until he stumbled right over a bush. Look at how red his face is getting. He's trying so hard to make a big sound. That did it. He kicked that little bush and pulled it from the ground and shook it with his trunk. Well, he is frustrated. And that was when that bush yelled at Ellison. What do you think you're doing? Leave me alone, you, you elephant. This is unusual, thought Ellison. I've been yelled at by all kinds of animals, but never by a bush. I'm sorry, little bush, Ellison apologized. Are you okay? That's very confusing. I don't know why the bush was talking to him. Let's see. Then out of this bush dropped that pesky weasel. Don't let it happen again, Smellison, he yelled and waddled away. Oh, that's not nice. We don't like when people call each other names. That's not nice. Poor Ellison. Ellison followed him around the corner, over the hill and into a valley, talking as he went. Hey, wait up. Weasel, you can't talk to me like that. He's following him around. I'm bigger than you and I, I apologized. And I didn't know you were there in the first place. And you can't make me feel any worse anyway because I can't even make a trumpet sound like an elephant. All I can make is a stupid little toot. See how they're walking farther and farther away. Oops, I skipped a page. Oh. Weasel stopped in his tracks and looked up at Ellison. Okay, do it. Do what? Ellison asked. Your sound, Weasel answered. Stop whining about it and let's hear it. Uh-oh, I don't know if this is gonna work. You know, Ellison doesn't think he can do very well with the sound making. Fine, Ellison agreed, and he blew a sad little sound. <laughs> Weasel shook his head. Yeah, that's terrible. I'd be mad too. And he disappeared into a hole in the ground. Oh. Poor Ellison's trying so hard. Ellison was not afraid of that little weasel. He walked right up, stuck his trunk down the hole, and blew one very crisp, clear sound that echoed underground. Oh my. I think it made a big noise. What followed was a long silence, during which Ellison was a little afraid. He wondered if he should have just let Weasel be this time. But then Weasel popped out of the hole with dirt on his fur and a smile all over his face. Now that I like, he said, shaking the dirt off. Do it again. You're making fun of me, replied Ellison. I don't blame him for thinking so. They have made fun of him before. No, I'm not, Weasel insisted. What else can you do? I don't know, admitted Ellison. Can you hold it longer? Ellison tried. And he could. Oh, good. And can you change the pitch? And he did. And can you make a lot of quick notes like, yeah, ta, 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 ta. And he did. Wow, yelped Weasel. This is great. Look at him dancing around. See that? that, 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 that. He seems very excited. In fact, he seems just about as excited as Ellison probably is. Okay, <clears throat> okay, now close your eyes and look inside. When you find your voice, let it out. 
Elson had no idea what a voice should look like, but he closed his eyes and looked inside and looked and looked until he found it. It looked like nothing he'd seen before, but he knew it right away. It was his very own voice. Ellison's legs felt stronger and his heart grew bigger. Oh my goodness. That's a big effort he's putting into that trumpety noise. He took in a deep breath and started with a long note that went on and on and on until all of the ears on all of the elephants in the watering hole turned to listen. They set out at once in search of that most extraordinary sound. That's right, Ellison, hollered Weasel, jumping up and down. Don't stop now, you've got it. And Ellison did not stop. He made every sound that came from inside and it formed a tune that made him dance. When the other elephants spied him from atop the hill, they saw and heard what they'd never before seen and heard. They stood and watched with their mouths hanging open. And before they knew it, all of their trunks were swinging in time to the rhythm of Ellison's jazzy music. That's a lot of elephants who are watching him now. When he came to the end of his brand new tune, Ellison opened his eyes and saw and heard the whole herd. They rushed downhill to see the elephant who had invented music. Leading the pack was Ellison's mom, beaming from one big ear to the other. How'd you do it, Ellison? I had help, Mom, from Weasel. Weasel? His mom asked. Your imaginary friend? Yeah, he really, he helped me find my voice and it's really unusual. Edna, Eleanor, and Eli crowded in next to Ellison, begging, teach us, teach us, please. Everyone wanted to be as unusual as Ellison. I think it's funny they all have E names, like Eva. Oh, let's see. All of the elephants and some of the other animals too, danced and sang and kept rhythm while Ellison played his jazz trunk. When the sun went down, the lightning bugs lit up the darkness. It's kind of a big party now, isn't it? All night long, animals came from everywhere to hear the unusual elephant with the extraordinary sound. Look at that. That's a lot of people to come, or animals rather, to come hear him do his music. The end. Oh my goodness, look how big the picture is. If I back up all the way, you can see how many animals. That's a lot of animals coming from all over the place, isn't it? The end. Well, hooray for Ellison. That was a happy ending. I like that. So I hope you liked story time today. We read three stories this time. We may be able to read three more next time. I don't know. We'll have to see. I just want to say hi to everybody. So let's see if I can remember. We have Brandon and Fiona and Asaya and Rosie and Zelda and Harrison and Tristan and Eva and William and Jace. I'm so glad that I got to read to all of you today. I hope you're having a good day and I will see you again soon. Bye.